Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we're continuing our gluc glucose project and we're going to be painting Priestess Doles. Or Dolce. Whatever. There's nothing really to show as far as construction. It's very simple. There's only a handful of parts. And we assembled up to the point where it will get in the way of painting, which is just the main body, the two arms, and the peacock feathers in the back. And once that is done, we prep for priming. For priming, we're going to use our good old faithful uh, Bright Touch Gray Car Primer. And now, with Cadian Flesh Tone, Carrion Bird Crimson, and Pallid Witch Flesh, we're going to paint the skin. We're going to start off with a base layer of Cadian Flesh Tone on the head, neck, chest, the arms, and don't forget the feet. Once that's done, we're going to do a slightly watered down Carrion Crimson Bird all over Carrion Bird Crimson all over the skin. And once that is finished, we're going to go back and we're going to dry brush Cadian Flesh Tone all over. We want to do a very light dry brush on the arms though, because they're like these ritual scarring tattoos, and if we put too much effort, we'll remove them. And once that is done, we will take a one-to-one -one mix of Cadian Flesh Tone and Pallid Witch Flesh, and we will overbrush slash dry brush again onto the features. Now, we want to do uh, we want to do as little as possible on the face. We want to do it on like the the forehead and the nose and stuff, but we want to be careful not to erase the Carrion Bird Crimson underneath. When I did this, I kind of did a little too much. I should have done it even lighter or less painting on it because then it kind of removed all the depth that the Carrion Bird Crimson had. So I had to go back and reapply some Carrion Bird Crimson and just redo the face. So just be cautious with the face. It requires the most of a highlight, but you want to only brush very little and very sparingly to not erase all the details underneath. And now with Dark Reaper and Nuln Oil, we're gonna paint the, like, I guess the pants and stuff like that. We're gonna keep it simple, a layer of Dark Reaper. And then once that is done, we will apply a layer of Nuln Oil all over, which includes the belts on the chest. And once that is done, we're going to go back with Dark Reaper and we're simply going to just paint the upper raised areas and highlights. Basically, wherever there's large blotches of the lighter color, we're just going to apply paint uh, about out through half of the light raised areas. And now with Hoeth Blue, Ulthwan Gray, Bealtan Green, we're going to paint the peacock feathers. We're going to start off with a base layer of Hoeth Blue all throughout the model. This will take a few coats because like, you have to shift it around <laughs> to grab it. And once that's done, we're going to take Ulthwan Gray and we're going to dry brush up and down to pick out the raised areas, the points and edges. And once that is all done, we're going to take Bill Tan Green and apply a solid level, uh, layer onto it. We want there to be a little bit of puddling. We want it to be thin in areas, but when, when there's a place that should have depth, we want there to be depth. And now with Dawnstone and Magos Purple, what we're going to do is we're going to paint the gray center pieces of these uh, peacock wings. We're going to start with the layer of Dawnstone. Now, I did end up messing up, but I would, what I do here is I apply pure Magos Purple onto it. What I should have done is water it down a little bit and thinly apply a layer to make sure I don't have to reapply it a few times. One good coat of Magos Purple was all I would need, but I kind of messed that up and it became a little too dark in some areas. Now with Cantor Blue, Hoeth Blue, and Ulthwan Gray, we're going to paint the uh, the little gems in the middle or of the feathers. We start off with a base layer of Cantor Blue. There's a circle in each of these gray spots that's going to be uh, where these like gem-like things are. Now 
And then once that's done, we're going to do a one-to-one -one mix of Cantor Blue and Hoeth Blue. And we're going to cover like 80 to 90% of these gems. The darkest part will be towards the bottom. And then we're going to do pure Hoeth Blue on all the, uh, the like top half, top 50% of each of these. Or as best as you can. And honestly, I kind of just call it there. I don't bother using the Ultuan Gray. I think, yeah, you know what's good enough. So. And now with Gene Steeler Purple, Carrion Bird Crimson, and Damon at Hyde, we are going to paint the robes, the outside more specifically. We're going to start off with a base layer of Gene Steeler Purple on all the outside of the robes. And once that is done, we're going to take Carrion Bird Crimson and we're going to apply it all over the model. We don't want a heavy pull, but we do want a noticeable pooling of the color in the depths. And once that is done and dry, we're then going to take Jean Sealer Purple and we're going to dry brush all over the model, side to side, not up and down really, well, except in some cases. And we're going to dry brush all over. And then once that's done, we're going to take Damonet Hide and we're going to dry brush all over the model again, slightly lighter this time. And then once that's done, uh, some of the depth is gone, so we're going to take pure Carrion Bird Crimson and apply it with a very fine tipped brush into the deepest recesses. And then once that is done, we're going to take some watered down Damonet Hide and we're going to paint it onto the very most pronounced edges of the folds. And then with Damonet Hide and Nolan Oil, we're going to apply it onto the front uh, flap cloth thing that she's wearing. It's going to be very simple, just a layer of Damonet Hide, then a thin layer of Nolan Oil, we don't want heavy pulling, and then we're going to highlight 50 to 40 percent of this flap thing with Damonet Hide on the most raised areas. And then we're going to apply Nolan Oil a second time, making sure it's not too heavy and not too pulley. And then we're going to apply Damonet Hide on the most uh, raised points and the very edges of the cloth. Simple, easy, done. I then decide to go a little bit further and I take a little bit of Gene Sealer Purple, mix it in, and then I just apply it on the most pronounced, most raised areas of this uh, cloth. With Gene Sealer Purple and Palette Witch Flesh, we're going to paint the, her top. We're going to start off with a layer of Gene Sealer Purple all over. And then what we're going to do is a one-to-one -one mix of Gene Stealer and Pallid Witch Flesh. And then we're going to apply it pretty much covering like 90-95% of her top. And then with a little bit of water, a bit more water down, we're going to take Gene Stealer Purple and two parts Pallid Witch Flesh and apply it on the most raised, most pronounced areas of her top. Make sure it's a little bit watered down so it flows better. It's better to do about two small coats of this. And don't forget, like, the midsection of her shirt thing has some folds that you should paint. And now with Eschen Grey and Nuln Oil, we're going to paint this little ceremonial knife she has on her side. So we're going to start with a base layer of Eschen Grey. Once that dries, Nuln Oil. Once that dries, highlight its most raised areas with Eschen Grey. But then it's still a little too dark, so I take a little bit of, like, uh, Dark Reaper and apply it on the most raised areas. And so the knife is visible. And while we're at it, I take Eschen Grey and I apply directly into her eyes. The eyes on the cover are black out. blacked out, so yeah, sure. And now with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, we're going to paint the entire model of what we've painted with this to give it a cloth and lifeless skin texture. However, I completely forgot that I did not paint the inside of the uh, robes yet, so slight mistake on that. And so with Pallid Witch Flesh and I decided not to use Carrion Bird Crimson, it's fine. 
I then just paint the inside of the robes this and the bottom edges and the folds of the robes with pallid witch flesh. Two coats is good enough and I don't bother with the carrying bear crimson in the end. And then I make sure to seal it in with the uh, AK Interactive. And now with Iron Hand Steel, we're going to paint all the little uh, studs that are in her face, her head, on her pants, and various metal pieces, as well as the plate she is holding. And now with Liberator Gold and Stormhole Silver, we're going to paint all the gold metallics. We start with Liberator Gold, we're going to paint the belt that she's wearing this, the chest piece, the metal thing has this, as well as her uh, bracelets. And then, and don't forget the uh, back thingy. And once that is done, I'm going to take Stormhole Silver. Now, I tried to overbrush it. I mean, it, it doesn't really work. I mean, you have to basically dry brush Stormhole Silver on, and it's only onto large objects, so it wasn't going to work here. So, what you want to do with very small detail things is you want to load up your brush with it, make sure it's not runny, and you just do tap, 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 tap on the spot repeatedly, and then the Stormhole Silver will magically come off onto the model. And then with Cantor Blue and Hoeth Blue, we're going to be painting all the gems on her chest, stomach, and the bottom of the flag thingy. This is a base layer of Cantor Blue, a one-to-one -one mix of Hoeth Blue covering like 70-80% of the whole gem with the darkest part being at the bottom of each gem, and then pure Hoeth Blue making a ring around the upper half 60% of the gem. And easy, done. And now with Liquitex Gloss Varnish, we're going to apply a little bit watered down gloss varnish on all of her pants on the gems that, that is on her body, as well as the gems on the peacock thingy. I'm counting them as gems, I'm just gonna paint them as that. And then we come to assembly. Now, I use model glue for this whole thing. What I would do now, looking back, is I would take super glue and attach the back quills onto it and then use the model glue on the arms and the robes. Now one thing to note is that when the robes meet, uh, there's a little bit of a gap in. I assume they meant for this thing to be built in one piece, but it is just too ridiculously hard to uh, paint this well and assemble it. So after I uh, assembled the back, I had to repaint a little bit of the robes just to fix it up, but no problem. And finally, after everything is done with Emperor's Children, Blood Angel's uh, Contrast Paint, and Blood for the Blood God, we're going to paint this heart that is on the plate. We'll start off with Emperor's Children, around two coats because I thinned it down too much to give it the pinkness, and then I'm just going to apply a little bit of watered down Angel's uh, Blood Angel's Red on it. It didn't really work too well, I then tried to overbrush the Emperor's Children back on top, but this heart was just too tiny and too small for me to really pick out the details and overbrush it well. So then I just applied Blood for the Blood God in the circle, like the little basin of the plate, and then just a thin layer on top, and it looked, I guess, good enough. And here we have it. So, this model, I feel like, so I did some stuff that was good, some stuff that was bad, I'm just going to say it's an average of 7. So I was able to get a bit of the uh, ritual uh, ritual tattoos or flesh carvings out onto the arms. The rows were good. I was able to get a good green on the peacock feathers. I kind of screwed up the little gem parts of the feathers, but the pants is good. The skin is good. The face, eh. The heart, I couldn't paint it too well. Um, on its own, this is an okay model, but it's part of a giant set, so it's, it's a very simple, straightforward model. It doesn't take that much time to paint it. So, well, that's pretty much it. Alright, like the video if you like the video, share if you want to share it, comment if you want to comment, or nitpick something, uh, and that is all for now, the rest is coming relatively soon, I've just been kind of busy.